Hi, I'm Sabrina. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So this would have been the perfect project to do during spooky season, but since I can't seem to get my life together, here we are. So for this project, I wanted to make a skeleton kind of corset harness thing, and I wanted it to be Lady Gaga meets Geiger. So with that in mind, let's get to the design. So these are some rough sketches I came up with so far. And they're kind of like elements of each of them, and I think I'm leaning more towards this uh, more sharp version of the rib cage than this version. So I'm gonna try to draw out a final design, which I think is gonna look very much like this. So here's the final design I came up with, which features a very angular rib cage, a neck corset, as well as a very stylized spine, which includes both the sacrum and the iliac crests. And now that I had a final design, it was time to get started. So to start, I made a full scale template. And once I was happy with that, it was time to start building the actual corset. So for the base of my ribs, I used a thick gauge wire, which would act as the skeleton for my skeleton. Then to secure all the connection points of my large gauge wire, I wrap those connection points in a fine gauge wire to hopefully hold them in place. And just to be extra sure they stayed secure, I added two part epoxy to really lock in those joints. Once everything was locked in place, I used epoxy sculpt, which is a two-part epoxy, to start sculpting out what my ribs would actually look like. On the parts that were thicker, I added foil to fill out the structure, so I wasn't using tons of epoxy sculpt, and I did this for the rib cage, the iliac crest, and the tailbone. This helped in two ways. One, it kept it lighter, and two, it kept it more cost-effective because I was using less epoxy sculpt. As for the spine, since it was going to be the same shape repeated over and over, it didn't make a lot of sense to sculpt 12 identical pieces, so instead I sculpted one using Chavant clay and then made a silicone mold for that. Now run that beautiful silicone footage. Oh, yeah. And once my mold was done, I was able to use resin to make a bunch of individual vertebrae until I had enough for the whole spine. And after this, I took a little bit of a break. Yeah. That did say two years later. See, the thing is, whenever you start a project, you have to figure out what materials you're gonna use. And when I started this project, I had two ideas in mind. One was to do it the way I was currently doing it. The other was to sculpt the rib cage flat out of Chavant clay, then mold that, then run it in silicone. And if I had run it in silicone, it would have contoured perfectly to my body when it was worn. And what I was realizing at this point in the project, doing it the way I had decided to do it, it was not looking anything like I had originally pictured. For one thing, it was considerably bigger and bulkier than I wanted. For another thing, there was no way it was ever gonna perfectly contour to my body. And it just was not getting anywhere near as smooth and streamlined as I wanted it to be. Now there are sometimes you start on a project, realize you used the wrong materials and start over. And there are other times you decide, you wanna know what? It is what it is, I'm just gonna continue. In my case, 
I just stopped working on it for two years. But finally, I decided it was this far along. I might as well just finish it, and here we are. And now that I was back on the project and decided I was going to finish it, it was time to start on the neck corset. I've made a neck corset before, so I figured this would go pretty smoothly. And it didn't. So to start, I made a template out of cellophane and duct tape, which is pretty standard for how I make templates. And then drew out my pattern pieces and cut those pattern pieces out. Once I had those pieces, I cut them out of my fabric. The first fabric you see me cutting out is a nice thick velvet fabric. But it was a little bit too thick and was not feeding nicely through my machine and kept getting stuck. So I tried another fabric. So next I tried some pleather along with some scrap fabric I had left over from my origami dress. This wasn't as sturdy as I wanted so I tried adding little stays to it. But again, this did not agree with my sewing machine. So finally, I used that pleather fabric along with some leftover upholstery fabric I used on this chair actually, and that seemed to do the trick. It was not exactly what I wanted, but at this point, I just wanted it done. And once it was all sewn, I added eyelets so I could lace it up. And since my sewing machine and I seemed to have a truce going on, I figured now was a good time to try and sew the dress. I knew I wanted a bodycon dress for this, and since the last dress I did was pretty much exactly the fit I was going for, I just decided to trace that dress and cut out a front and a back. Originally, I was just going to do two pieces, but since the fabric was kind of see-through, I ended up cutting out four panels, two for the front, two for the back. And I just sewed those all together. The fit isn't amazing, but it works. And now that I had all my pieces, it was time to assemble everything. Originally, I was going to make straps out of that pleather I had bought, but that did not go smoothly, so instead I bought velvet ribbon. And this is where you know I was totally over this project because I broke out the glue gun. Which, when it came to attaching the spine pieces, worked fine. But when it came to attaching all my metal rings, this was not the right thing to use. The right thing to do would have been to either drill holes and put the rings through the holes or to use the same two-part epoxy, but I was very much done with this project. When everything was assembled, I did a quick fit test to see how it was looking and realized the spine was just kind of dangling and spinning. So I needed to make sure the backs of all the spine pieces were painted and I needed to pull the spine in so it would fit better. So I remedied that by adding two jump links, painting the backs, and then attaching chains that I could then clip to the ribs. And with that, this project was finally done. So this was by far the most disappointed I've been with the final project. I definitely think I should have used silicone for the ribs and real leather for the neck corset and all the straps. Also, if you're wondering what happened to the hip pieces, they didn't fit. I squeezed them on, but couldn't attach them the way I wanted, and without them, I think it just doesn't look complete. But let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like this video, please think about giving it a like, and if you want to see more, please think about subscribing. Bye!